Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.4 and Razbam Sims AV-8B Harrier Module. This is Addendum 1, Laser Maverick E2. Uh, there have been a few updates to the Harrier in recent months and weeks, and uh, one of the major updates was the inclusion of the E2 variant of the Laser Maverick. This is uh, a very similar weapon to the original E model Maverick that's included in the game already. However, this version of the Maverick is slightly more capable. It includes a CCD-based laser seeker as opposed to a more old-school laser seeker from the 1985 original E model. Um, it has better integration with the Harrier. There's been an update to the way in which Mavericks are integrated in the Harrier to make that integration more realistic. One of them is that the, uh, the multi-mission computer in the Harrier is apparently only capable of taking a single video feed at a time. Uh, and so in the event that you have uh, older school Mavericks and a targeting pod on board, you can only see the video feed from one or the other not both, uh, as we were previously able to do. The E2 gets around this because it has been specially integrated with the targeting pod in the Harrier, and this allows you to kind of peek at the Seeker video. Of course, in the case of the Laser Maverick, Seeker video is just the Seeker head position, uh, but you can peek at the Seeker video uh, while on the targeting pod page. Um, the other thing is because this is a CCD based laser seeker, in the real world at least, I don't know if this is simulated, it is possible for it to lose sight of the laser spot but continue to guide on the target for a period of time and reacquire that laser spot later. I don't know if this means it's capable of lock on after launch, that's not something I've tested. Uh, I would suspect not, but um, you never know, it might be. I would imagine that the seeker head still needs to know roughly where to be looking for the laser spot. Um, so it, th this means that the procedure for making use of these weapons has changed. Uh, the original E-model Maverick can now not be self-designated. You need an off-board laser in order to be able to fire it. The E2 version, however, because it has this special integration uh, with the targeting pod in the Harrier, is capable of being self-designated. And so today we're going to go over that procedure. So, you'll see here I have a loadout of four times AGM 65E2, which is what they're called in uh, US Navy and Marine Corps service, uh, also called the AGM 65L in US Air Force terminology. Um, so, I'm going to get the aircraft started up. There's not particularly any setup to be done with this, and I will show you how to uh, prosecute an attack using this new version of the Maverick. Okay, you join me in the cockpit en route to Waypoint 2, which is where our targets are. Uh, I'm going to take you through the procedure for setting up the Maverick E2. So, first thing we're going to do is take a little look at the left side of the cockpit. We're going to get air-to-ground mode enabled. We're going to turn on the master arm, and we're going to go to the stores page for now. So, menu, and stores. And we can confirm here on the stores page we've got targeting pod, 300 rounds in the cannon pod, and four LMV-2s, which is the uh, E2 version of the Maverick, Laser Maverick 2. So, something to note, the spool-up time for the old E-model Maverick was 30 seconds. Um, with the new E2 version, it actually takes 90 seconds, because it has a gyroscope and some other advanced equipment inside that needs time to spool up. So what I tend to do is select the Laser Maverick, it will immediately give us the feed, and then I start my stopwatch. Uh, and that means that I'm going to know exactly when the missile is ready. The other thing to note is, of course, you have the usual status information here at the bottom left. Station 2 is currently in standby. It will display ready uh, when the time comes for it to be ready for use. And you have the option of enabling tone, uh, which I'm going to turn on just now. Uh, we've also defaulted to a code of 1688 on the Maverick. That's good. I'm going to come over to the right hand side while that's running and I'm going to go menu and targeting pod. Targeting pod confirms 1688, so that's good. Notice that the moment I brought up the targeting pod, however, my video feed from the Laser Maverick disappeared. This is the restriction I was talking about before. Uh, you cannot have both the Laser Maverick and the targeting pod feed up at the same time. There is a trick, however. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to double depress my sensor select down, and I've now 
activated the targeting pod and um, I've gained control of it through my HOTAS. And if I press sensor select switch forward long and release, I then can look at the laser maverick feed for, I think it's 14 or 15 seconds. Oh, actually, it's even shorter than that. And then it disappears after a time. So you have the ability to peek at the feed for a moment. I'll do that again. L uh, sensor set select switch forward long and release. Oh, and it just turned ready. That was perfect timing. And yeah, if I don't touch anything, it will return to the targeting pod without any, <laughs> without any further input. Cool. Okay, so that's working nicely. Let's get the targeting pod set up. We're going to put the laser into arm. We're going to turn its mode to laser. Uh, I'm going to leave the camera in CCD actually today. That will make my life a little bit easier. Uh, and I'm actually going to go over to the left-hand side. I'm going to push sensor select switch left. Oh no, that won't work because I've got the I've got the targeting pod mode on. If I double depress and get rid of targeting pod mode, <laughs> I can then press sensor select switch left to get my EHSD. Now I know that my target is at this steer point, so I'm simply going to designate the steer point, and immediately my targeting pod is looking in the correct location. I now will double depress sensor select switch, and I have control over the pod again. I'm going to sensor select switch left to get my narrow field of view, and let's start slewing and find our target. And we need to use the push buttons on here to actually do the zoom. Uh, so I would quite like to attack this helicopter that we have right here. So I'm going to press sensor select switch aft to put it into point track. I'm going to slew over this and depress. And mm, actually I kind of want to target the, the base of this. Uh, maybe if I'm in Fleur, I'll get a contrast lock better. It still says area lock, which is weird. Area, point track, there. Okay, that's close enough. So, at this stage, we can now begin flying inbound towards the target, and the Maverick is ready to use. So, uh, one thing to note on the HUD, uh, when you have the E-Maverick selected, there's a crocs, cross at the top of the HUD. This indicates the, the seeker position, and that it is currently caged. Uh, once we get a bit closer we will fire the laser and then uncage uh, and we'll almost certainly need to nose down to get the seeker head to actually see the target. Uh, and once we uncage this X will be moving back and forth. So uh, coming out of active pause and let's fly towards the target. We have target range displayed on the HUD there currently 13 miles out. We're going to want to be a bit closer before we employ the missile. So coming up on 11 miles, I'm actually going to fire the laser as of now. So laser is fired. I'm going to tap uncage. And seeker head is moving back and forth. And again, I can press sensor select switch forward long to take a look. And I can confirm that. If I nose down, we now have the box on the target. I can now nose back up again. And uh, the box remains uh, on the target. So that's working perfectly push and hold pickle and we have a tone and we have rifle uh, we could now turn off target I'm actually going to do that because that's good practice and we should find that that missile will strike exactly where we've told it to let's zoom this out a little now keep in mind that because we are self-designating we must retain the targeting pod looking at our intended target the whole time and we must continue to fire the laser because the missile is tracking based on that. I'm actually just going to refine my track a little. There we go, that's better. And you can do that right up until impact, although of course if you make too violent a maneuver you might make your missile miss. And splash. That's a perfect hit. We can stop firing the laser. Uh, and I'm actually going to show you how to do a target of opportunity style attack as well. So I'm going to press uh, sensor select switch left to take out my field of view. I'm going to turn off designate mode here. And I'm going to press nose wheel steering while I've got the targeting pod mode active. And that first press puts me back to slave designation, which means it's back at the steer point. If I press it again, 
I'm going to get no designation and slaved to velocity vector. So it's now looking exactly where the velocity vector is on the aircraft. Uh, this is a good mode for doing target of opportunity attacks. You'll see that I've got a circle on my flight path marker. So let's bring the aircraft out of autopilot and let's get turned back on target here. And I'm going to show you how to do a kind of quicker style target of opportunity attack. And this time we'll do it without peeking at the uh, Maverick Seeker Head uh, video because that's actually unnecessary. It's just something that you can do to confirm uh, that it's working as intended. But you actually have all the information that you need on the HUD. So I'm turning back in on target. There is my steer point circle. I'm going to put my flight path marker over the target area. And I'm going to depress TDC. Oops, I also slewed it as I did that. But anyway, slewing it back on target. I'm going to reduce that uh, field of view with sensor slight switch left. I'm depressing the TDC. I'm going to fire the laser. Uncage the seeker. It says in range. Pickle. I have rifle. And once again, I'm going to turn off target. But continue to monitor. Oops, I rolled the aircraft a bit too much. I'm going to continue to monitor that target using the targeting pod. And as I said before, we want to continue to laze that target uh, and uh, and have the, the targeting pod looking at it. In fact, this time, let's watch it from the missile's point of view. Goodbye, MI-28. <laughs> that was a good one. Excellent. So, uh, it's that simple. Uh, you just got to keep in mind that you've got 90 seconds for the Seeker to do its uh, alignment. Uh, and then you also want to make sure that you uh, m make sure that you have the weapon selected, you have the targeting pod looking at your intended target, fire the laser, then uncage the missile. And uh, that's pretty much it. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.